I told you he's a bear specifically. I thought it was a nickname. Yes, this is exactly what you thought it was. Well, it's what some of you thought it was. So if you thought it was about dating a big, hairy, burly man, well, no, it's not about that. Get ready to be disappointed. But if you thought it was about dating a literal bear, then you you were right. Greetings, comic lovers, and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from movies, comics, new and old, to history, to anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. I found My Boyfriend is a Bear on a list of graphic novels you need to read. And I did feel this way, but probably not for the reasons that they wanted me to. Just the curiosity. Curiosity is a harsh mistress. My Boyfriend is a Bear was published through Oni Press in 2018 and was written by Pamela Ribbon with art by Kat Ferris. It has a very specific origin and tone, and the creators have been very clear and vocal about how they want the work to be taken. Whether it will or won't be taken that way is something else entirely. They want it to be viewed as funny, fun, cute. The premise of the story is this. Our protagonist is Nora. She is 28 years old. She's stuck in a crossroads, in a rut, at a job she hates, with some friends that she's not that close to, a family that is distant and a string of failed boyfriends. This is when she finds herself embarking on a relationship she never expected with an American black bear. On how she got this idea, Ribbon stated, You know I have all the quotes for this. I had just started a long distance relationship with a rather mysterious man who ate all my good snacks and sometimes hung his jacket on a tree branch. That's when I realized it's possible that he was secretly a bear and kept going out of town to do bear things. I had very little experience in dating and was getting a lot of conflicting advice about what kind of relationship worked best. It wasn't until I stopped trying to figure out the future in my present that I was able to see what a gift I'd been given. That boyfriend is now my husband, and people still don't see the bear beyond his fancy suits and glasses. Now, the term bear when it comes to dating actually is a slang term. It's a term applied to men used predominantly, though not exclusively in gay culture. It's to define a certain type of man, although there are some internal debates as to what exactly that man is. But in general, it's viewed as a big, burly, masculine man. This is Bob Belger. There's a flag, there was a magazine, there's a whole history of associating animals with certain types of men. It's interesting and makes one lament that there aren't more jokes about that in the comic. But I'm not sure how widespread the knowledge of that as a slang term is. Some of you took the opportunity to make jokes about this when I post about it in the community tab, so thank you for the laughs. And laughs were what these creators were trying to elicit. This alongside an earnest look at love. Ferris stated that she attempted to convey this through the very art style itself. Well, for one, this book has a subject matter that could change tone significantly depending on how the art was handled. I made it my job from the start to make sure this book comes across as fun, cute, and sweet. We'd really like for people to suspend their disbelief and give this charming love story the chance it deserves. And Ribbon ultimately defined the book as follows. This is a story for people who can relate to falling in love with someone they least expected. So let's take a look at My Boyfriend is a Bear and see if you end up falling in love with the bear. It's going to be a bit of a long one, so you might need to settle in and get a snack. This video is brought to you by Boxu. They are a snack box subscription service so that you can enjoy authentic Japanese snacks all year round, a box a month, and they are from Japan. This box is great if you're a person who loves to try various snacks, but also if you're interested in learning about them. The box comes with cultural guides and info on the snacks. The website even has documentaries you can watch by the artisans, because they also list the makers in here, and some of these people have been making snacks and desserts for a long time. In some cases, we're talking over a century. In general, each month, each box has a different theme. Now, you can preview what you're going to get inside the box, but I like to be surprised. And if you're ready to start your Japanese snack journey, I have a code for you. Use my code CASUALLY10 and use the link down below to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack box subscription from Boxu. This cover is very upfront as to what this is. So for many, they'll know if they're in or out right off the bat. The art style is a cuter one, meant to evoke a cartoonish vibe and less a realistic one. It's also very bright and colorful to try and convey that lighthearted sense the creators were aiming for. And some will respond to that with an aw, cute. But for some, the response will be, what is going on? Why is it going on? Is he a real bear? We open on a day in the life of Nora and Bear. The bear has no name, and they actually explain why the bear has no name, because it comes up a couple of times across interviews. And each time, it's an equally kind of quippy response. Ribbon stated, he wasn't hers to name. Oh, that bear, he can't wait for a plate to eat an ice cream sandwich. We then flash to an explanation. Just get right to it. Let's hit us with the exposition. People want to know. My name is Nora. I'm 28 years old. My boyfriend is a 500 pound American black bear. Isn't he handsome? By bear standards or by human standards? She details how they have an ideal relationship, watching shows together, going on bike rides, going to the farmer's market, reading books to him. Ooh, very Beauty and the Beast. There's something so sweet and almost sad as we sit and learn why her other relationships went bad. That was too many words inside the staff. 
But it's okay, cause I'll do it for a joke. But their relationship isn't perfect. He breaks a lot of things. The layout in this graphic novel is fun. It plays in formatting various ways and in different ways, so it's not stagnant. The paneling flows and feels dynamic, but you can still follow it. Like this cutaway with Bear Centered and all the things he's broken with explanations as to how placed around him. <sighs> the zipper to my favorite sundress. I'm not gonna leave you hanging. She has a sexual relationship with this bear. It's Bear by Marion Engel all over again. All hail Canada's most controversial novel, allegedly. Which, firstly, Really? It's only 141 pages. So firstly, novel? Question mark. And secondly, that's all we've got? We got Upper Squick Game. I'm disappointed. But he has never broken my heart. Some people say it's strange that I date a bear. They say they'd be too scared. Well, that's stupid. Did you know they are 180,000 times more likely to be killed by a bee than a bear? I mean, maybe on average, but not on a one-to-one -one comparison if you were dating a bee versus dating a bear. Those are flawed and manipulated statistics. The numbers don't lie, but you can certainly control how you present them. I see you, Nora. People, don't date bees, okay? We then get into the type of person Nora is, which is key because ultimately the story is about Nora and her journey, how she has changed this relationship with the bear, which again is mostly also the plot of bear. I have a tendency to hang on to things. I sometimes cry for hours too easily. I have this weirdo job where people basically yell at me all day long. I don't really like wearing pants. The bear is okay with that one. Nora is getting ready for a date, but it's a sad preparation. The bear needs to go into hibernation. So they're going out trying to enjoy his last evening. And if you're wondering how she can afford all this finery and the copious amounts a bear eats, especially since they got some salmon and caviar, it's because the bear got himself a sweet corporate job. We'll get to it. I feel so selfish. I know this isn't his fault. We then flash back to how Bear and Nora met, and we also detail Nora's past relationships. Before the Bear, there was Ben. Ben is a pretentious hipster who likes all the books you're supposed to like because they're on a read before you die list and not because he actually likes them. He also belittles and makes fun of Nora for reading magazines. Nora genuinely dislikes him, but she's still dating him, for as we can glean from Nora's wall of men she has dated, she not only has a low sense of self-worth, she also is codependent. The low self-worth not for the amount of men, but for the reasons of the breakups and the picture they paint as a whole. And she also correlates things oddly. Now this is done for humor purposes, likening things that are mundane or not such a big deal with something a bit more shocking or extreme. This is why War Suspenders and Always Wore Puka Shells is right there with this one that I'm putting up on the screen but I'm not gonna read because YouTube might hurt me. And still in love with his ex. Or lied about little things. It ends up framing Nora as a very unassertive or fickle person. Or some kind of combination of the above. As we see that she doesn't confront Ben about being rude to her but goes for a walk, rails about it but ultimately buries the magazines and vows never to read one in front of Ben again. She even apologized to him before she left for reading them. It's here that she sees the bear behind her and runs off because bear. She decides to use this near-death experience as she calls it to break up with Ben. She finishes a dress she's working on, which is something that she's interested in, making clothes, but she rarely does it. She goes out with her friends, her best friends as she calls them. There are two. One is Deborah, who's very judgmental of her, and the other is Carly, who Nora admits she doesn't know that well when she was closer to. So we never really get a handle on Carly except that she's cool and fun. The paneling here as Nora gets drunker and drunker is really good. It's disorienting and confused, out of focus. It visually manages to encapsulate the experience while also playing with art styles. Her friends get Picasso faced at one point. It's all revolving about what type of men she should date. Nora gets way too drunk and maudlin and it gets awkward. My next boyfriend will be brave and funny and smart and silly and he'll like to be on the couch as much as he likes being outside. I will have adventures, and every night when he holds me, I'll feel safe and loved, and that's impossible. What am I doing? What am I saying? No man could ever be all those things. Firstly, it's time to go home, Nora, which he does. But secondly, really impossible? It didn't seem like that discordant of a list. At home, the bear is there going through her trash and he shows her one of the magazines she had buried that day camping with Ben. The bear dug it up. The bear followed her here. The bear is a stalker. He only saw her once and now he's at her house. Drunk and willing to try something new, she invites the bear inside and they end up eating food right out of her refrigerator. What a bonding moment. And then she throws up in the sink. Listen, bear, she's a bit of a mess. You can always just eat the food and go. But no, the bear stays. I could stand up and yell until I send this bear running away from me forever. Or I could do something scary, like open myself up to the unpredictable. Nora might not have the strongest sense of self, but she does have a strong voice in this story. She does feel like a character and you come to understand her. Whether you come to like her or not is another story. So the moments where she's contemplating relationships do have a genuine ring to them. It then just becomes a question of whether you're laughing or gelling with the bear aspect of the story. The bear dynamic. Cause it varies. Sometimes the bearness plays right into he's an animal and that's where the comedy is. While other times the bear feels like a simile for a certain type of man or relationship, which can end up playing awkwardly. The two don't 
don't always marry seamlessly together. Leaving you at points not want to look at things too closely. Like you're supposed to be hovering above at a certain level of suspension the entire time. But then the story will force you to think about things. Like when it stops to explain while stating that the people who are wondering are twisted, that while she is menstruating, she sleeps in a separate room for safety reasons. Which is actually something that has not been proven. And there have been studies because it's a pretty prevalent rumor. What was shown in a study conducted in 1983 with polar bears, but there were only four polar bears, and they were also captive polar bears, let's give all the facts. These polar bears reacted strongly to the scent of a used tampon, but not to actual menstruating females. A 1991 study involving black bears, 26 free range bears exposed to used tampons, and 20 to menstruating women in different stages of flow. And they didn't react to either. They've also done this study with sharks. The fact that these are real studies hurts me a bit. They stem from a 1967 incident. In 1967, two women were attacked and killed on the same night in separate instances while camping by grizzlies. One woman was menstruating. The other had tampons in her backpack. While investigators at the time concluded the murders were a result of food and trash left out, the rumor began that it was because they were menstruating. Funnily enough, even though grizzlies were the attacking bears, they're the one bear this study hasn't been done with. Now granted, the sample sizes were small, so it's hardly like the most definitive study out there. But there hasn't ever really been enough to draw a correlation to the idea that if women are menstruating, they shouldn't go in the woods or go outside and I guess get back to the hut. I probably wasn't actually supposed to research that or look into it at all. I was just supposed to laugh. I'm sorry, I'm not made that way. I must analyze things. I need to learn. The thirst is for knowledge. And cake, sometimes. The majority of the rest of the graphic novel is her evolving relationship with Bear and how it impacts her family and friends as well. It's kind of sad. She's falling for him because he does things like take out the trash and reach things down for her from high shelves. Like, what kind of men was she dating that just sitting on the couch watching a TV show and them actually enjoying it with her was revolutionary? There are some bear cat interludes sprinkling throughout as bear bonds with the cat. Not so. Uh, it says here that male bears abandon their cubs as soon as they're born? We're gonna have to talk about some things. Yes. Yes, you will. She learns to understand the bear, but they learn they can't wrestle together. This is some nice montage panel layout, but also she should be dead. Meeting her friends is a mixed bag. Carly is fine because her defying traits are positive and cool, while Deborah is not here for it at all. She's here to be the negative friend, and she has all the rhetoric that the creators can think of to say against this relationship. She even started off before they even got there by stating she was concerned because Nora had said he was big. No big boys for her. She doesn't like him thick. I told you he's a bear specifically. I thought it was a nickname. You see? All the potential bear jokes wasted a disservice to bears. Grr yourself, mister. Grr. There were points in this story where Carly was so into the bear, I was worrying it was gonna careen off into some kind of cheating subplot where the bear was cheating with Carly. It didn't happen because that would have undermined the overall theme of the book, but at the same time, I wouldn't have been surprised. But then the bear juggles creamers. Who could resist that? I maintain that Deborah is laughing because her sanity is cracking. We decide to try more public excursions. This is one of those moments where the universe becomes unclear and you must either spend all disbelief or descend into madness. Cause sometimes people react to him like he's an actual bear. And other times people react like it's Bojack and they're just animals walking around doing human things. It really just seems to depend upon whether the scene is trying to be dramatic or funny. Also look, a figurative bear, bear sighting. Her parents don't approve, oh what a surprise. Montage of who tore things up, the bear or the cat. Funny or disturbing, you decide. Oh, the bear built some cat climbers for her cat. Again, a nice but sad moment. We saw a montage of so many men and not one of them befriended the cats. Okay, so now we need to talk about Nora's job, the one that she's unhappy at, the one that makes her cry. She works at a call center for a website that is a pop-up that when people click on it thinking they've won, really it's a scam and they give their credit card information and pay a monthly fee. When they realize, or rather when a family member realizes because oft times the story stresses the people who fall for this are older, well then they call and sometimes they call her. Nora hates this job, but doesn't really express a strong distaste for what they do. It's more that she's getting yelled at. It's an odd choice because it paints her in a negative light or in a very passive one. This job isn't her only option. She doesn't have to work here. This job could have been almost exactly the same. Still at a call center, still with people yelling at her, but it could have been a different job where it wasn't a scam. And then would have felt even more unfair because she's being yelled at unjustly. She still is. She didn't start the website, but she's well aware that it's a scam. She works there. It's one of those boat why though moments. Also Ben works there. Hi Ben. Oops. Bear. Okay, let's go. Mating season was fun. This is just Bear without the author dedicating it to her psychiatrist or any kind of tenuous connection to any indigenous mythology. Also without the graphic references or the big giant mauling at the end. Bear is a big hit at Halloween and he got a job somehow. Just go with it. She made him a suit. It's nice. As the seasons change, Nora comes to realize that the bear is going to have to hibernate. This puts pressure on their relationship, this impending separation or even end. At first they try to ignore it and bury themselves in the relationship, but it starts to take its toll and they start to irritate each other. He made me watch him as he instructed me on how to refold the bag and put it back in the tin. Meanwhile, 
all around him. Also, she gained some weight because the bear. Dun dun dun. My job was becoming a pile too. And this is because they changed the hours, not because it's a horrible scam that's stealing money from old people. Throughout all of this, we see her cat is slowing down and something is wrong. And it's really sad, actually. The handling of the denial that there's something wrong with a beloved pet is really heartbreaking. It also hits home because you had all of those panels of the cat doing things with the bear and with her. And now all of a sudden they really come home how integral the cat has been to their life. A surprise birthday party for Nora really brings things to a head for her and Deborah, especially as she realizes that she doesn't really seem to have any of her own friends and doesn't like most of the people who are there. And also, Deborah invited Ben. I thought you guys were friends. You said I should never speak to him again. I say all kinds of things. Everyone in this scene is awful. He's a parlor trick, a circus freak. That's where you two belong, the circus. You can't have kids. You couldn't even adopt. Who'd let a bear have children. Let's pause her diatribe here a moment. Moments like this are why the story would really benefit from a clearer perception as to how the bear is perceived. Because if you read this through the lens of he's an animal, this is far more serious than most of the rest of the tone of the book. As have been the parts where Deborah is concerned that the bear is going to hurt her, which if he's a literal bear is a valid concern. If you read it as a simile or a stand-in as to paraphrase the idea for falling for someone you didn't expect, it can also be a bit disquieting. As while some may take this as dating against type, for others, especially with some of the rhetoric utilized, it could call to mind cross-cultural dating, interfaith dating, interracial dating, LGBTQIA plus dating. And if that is the vibe or lens one reads it through, that being compared to dating an animal, miles will vary on whether the humor lands or not. It does help that the story has gone out of its way in both writing, tone, and art to try and put across the idea that it is farcical, but it's not going to land for everyone. And for people who it misses, it might miss them very hard. This is not real. It's not normal. And it's not okay. Anyway, the cat dies and it's really devastating. And I cried. I know. Total Sigma move. Bear berries, not so. And even just looking at the panels. Thank them not looking at them right now. Because looking at them, I tear up. Gotta maintain my eyes hurt for the camera. This brings us back to the dinner of hibernation. It's really over. And she's coming to terms with that as she makes some breakfast the next morning and walks him back to the wild. Oh, bear. I'm really gonna miss you so much. The segments of their two lives at this point have different art styles, which does well to distinguish them, but also makes the bear feel more animalistic than ever. When I first saw the bear's family and he was hugging people, I thought that the bear was cheating on her and that she was the bear's side chick. I don't know why. I just keep trying to make the story way more salacious and dramatic than it is. Nora tries to go back into her pre-bear routine, but it feels hollow. She can't forget her time with the bear. Look, here he is pooping. She especially can't forget him when Deborah at a Christmas party also wonders if the bear has a girl. Girlfriend. So like any sane person, Nora goes out there in the middle of the night to the cave of hibernation to go check and see if he's a filthy cheater. He's not, so she lays down there in the cave, which finally enough is far more dangerous than anything going on with tampons. Nora is somehow changed by this proof of Bear's fidelity. She quits her job. Ben suddenly starts trying to get back with her, but she just rejects him and his goatee. And no, he can't have his arcade fire shirt back. That was a plot point. And she starts to move forward with her life. She really gets into her clothing and starts an Etsy shop. Clothes for your bear. She seems content in herself, not seeking, but secure in her relationship with Bear. Because it is the relationship that she is secure in. She still does have this kind of zen feeling that they're meant to be. I know there's a chance I'll never see the bear again. Do you though? I don't know if I believe that. The watercolor bear panels are quite lovely, but the bear cannot resist the lure of the digital city and Nora. And so popping on some dumpster clothes and with a kitten, he returns and they are reunited. Well, her boyfriend was actually a bear. There's actually a fair bit here to discuss because there are parts of this that are quite good. Nora feels very realized. By the story's conclusion, you completely understand Nora and who she is. The emotions feel real in this story and some of the ways relationships are talked about may resonate or feel familiar to some. The art does convey the tone they are going for, and there are lots of little visual gags inserted to find. There is a good and creative and diverse use of paneling, as well as silence, and the story can move forward purely visually. There are some situational jokes that if you're vibing with the premise come across as really funny. Again, humor is of course subjective. They also convey lots of little things they don't have to tell us directly, but that we can glean about the character, such as Nora's love of making clothing. So information is imparted in multiple ways, and the pressures of the impending breakup are a gentle yet relatable issue. And some of the subtle ways people disapprove are also well inserted. Before we get into the whole, he's a bear, let's talk about some of the other factors. The author stated when it came to Nora, Nora is coming out of that time in life when we're so accustomed to doing what people say we should do. We've been very focused on following the advice of parents, teachers, mentors, bosses, romantic partners, best friends, that we stopped trusting our own inner voices. Nora's journey with the bear is a quarter of life coming of age story about learning to recognize the difference between love and control. That sounds like a lot more than Nora actually 
actually appears to go through in this story. Nora comes across as incredibly immature in this story. And with a storyline that feels like she's younger than her 28 years, she feels aimless. And not as though she is being defined by anyone. Her parents are a near non-existent presence, and she has two friends, and she's very isolated, and she has her job by choice. She just doesn't feel like a very strong person, even if she does feel like a very defined character. If anything, Nora feels codependent, and that hasn't fully changed by the story's end, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. It's just this reads more like a story about finding your perfect partner, and that being the source of stability in one's life, rather than Nora coming to find out who she is. It doesn't even really feel like she's sticking it to societal expectations, because that's not really ever a focus, and it's never fully clearly defined what those are. It's inconsistently presented. The idea of love versus control may have been further strengthened if the bear had never returned. And again, the entire thing would have benefited from a bit of classification surrounding bear status in society to veer further away from bestiality territory. It really is a simple romantic story about the fantasy of a partner who completes you and makes you the best you by virtue of simply being with you, whether they're physically present or not, which for some can be quite a comforting, compelling fantasy. When it came to this aspect, the artist stated, when I read this script, I did feel a bit of a kinship with Nora. I've had my share of lame dating experiences in the past, which led to finally finding an amazing partner in an unexpected place. The best relationship advice I ever got was to date outside of your usual type. I think Nora takes that one step further by dating outside of her usual species as well. But this of course leads us to, he's a bear. Some will not be able to get past that and simply find it odd or even disgusting. The intent will not land. Bestiality, no thank you. Hashtag free the bear. But it must be noted that this work is not an attempt to normalize bestiality, but is playing firmly in the suspension of disbelief area. It doesn't always straddle that line the most gracefully. Again, for some, the intent won't matter, but the impact will. But others will say that the impact of this is just that it's a small story about a girl dating a bear. This book is aiming for a very specific audience. And for those who are into it, they will most likely find great enjoyment in this book. There is also some swearing, some heart swearing in this book, and some mild nudity, some butts. So some may be inclined to just dismiss the age rating out of hand when they see the art style, but for those who are bothered by that kind of thing, just know that it's there in this book. When it comes to the romance aspect, Ribbon also made a comparison to The Shape of Water, but it's not really the same. There's a humanoidness to creatures like that, as alien as they may appear. It's even present in their very shaping. That is not present with, say, a bear or any other animal that people are used to viewing through the lens of, well, dangerous wild animal. This got optioned, but we'll see if anything comes of that time of recording. But some of the article titles probably aren't helping its chances. My Boyfriend is a Bear is a work that is very clear on what it wants to be. So I have to ask you, is that what it was for you? What do you think? Did you enjoy the story? Did you know it existed? Was it for you? Did the cute tone land for you? Or are you squicked out? Boo, no bears. Also, who's Red Bear? Most controversial Canadian novel. Tell me things down below. While you're down there, please roll the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time today spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it. I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.